Now, on this video, I want you to cast your mind way back to 1982. I was just 15 years old. My dad had become a proud owner of a brand new Sony Triniton CRT television. And on that television, even though I was becoming a man, I still secretly watched Blue Peter every week just because I fancied the pants off of Sarah Green. I also used to religiously tune in to Top of the Pops to see how my favourite band was doing even though the presenters nowadays look a little bit dodgy and all the boys at that era wanted to look a bit like this and all the girls well they wanted to look like Cindy Lauper and uh, Madonna and Michael Jackson well Michael Jackson he actually looked quite normal back then Dad might have really pushed a boat out and got the last in the line of the Mark V's Cortinas called a Crusader, but it was more likely you were driven around in something slightly older like this, or perhaps one of the cars from the uh, BL series back then in the day. Now, CB was around, of course. CB had started already a year before in 1981, and despite all of the protests of the teenagers that wanted 27 megahertz on AM, unfortunately, we'd been given FM. To, you know, me at 15 years old, it didn't seem to really make any difference. I just wanted to get myself on radio. I really wanted to get out there and make some contacts. You know, CB radio was absolutely massive. It was everywhere. It was hyper for kids. We were all desperate to get on the radio. And there were adverts in the papers from your local rumbelows, things like that. And, uh, well, you know, pocket money and Saturday jobs didn't go very far. And as kids, we all dreamed of getting a Rotel 240 or even its cheaper counterpart, which was the Binatone 5 Star. These radios had exotic features like a Delta Tune switch, but the reality was a lot more basic. In fact, your hard-earned pocket money probably got you to something like Halfords to buy a Harry Moss radio, or perhaps to Comet Warehouse where you could get the latest Amstrad, not even the prestigious 901 with that all-important Roger Bleak, but you got a 900 instead. It just didn't matter, it was just all about getting on radio because we've been sold CB hook, line and sinker with movies such as Convoy and these rather exotic, almost top shelf publications that came across from America which showed us CB radios and very, very attractive, scantily clad women. I'd blown all my hard saved money. I wanted a user manual, I wanted a, a book about CB radios that explained how the mystery of radio worked because I just didn't quite understand it and I wanted something you know, quite technical, something I could really get my teeth into. With only 40 channels FM and no AM and sideband, it wasn't going to be as technically kind of intuitive as in America, but I still wanted a decent book. But what I ended up getting for my 15th birthday was this, the Big Dummies Guide to CB Radio 40 channel version. It was very nice for someone to buy me the book. But, you know, you give this to a 15-year-old and the first thing they see is Big Dummy. And, of course, you can't really say that to a 15-year-old. And on the front cover, it had this kind of, like, flipping stoned-out rabbit who looked like Dylan from the Magic Roundabout that throughout the book kept going, hook, 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 for some reason. And it just didn't kind of grab me and it ended up getting thrown in a cupboard somewhere and forgotten. Well, that was about it. And then a little while ago, one of my subscribers kindly sent me a parcel and in it was this book. And I noticed this book was the FMAM and sideband version, which is a lot more comprehensive than the UK 40 version that I had myself. So I started flicking through the book, and yeah, there's the obligatory kind of dumb cartoons with that stupid rabbit going hick, 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 and all that rubbish in it. But as I got further into the book, I noticed that uh, this book was a whole lot more involved. And in fact, it sort of turns out that this was the book that I would, would have hoped to have got when I was 15 years old and radio was all just one big sort of mystery to me. So I thought what I'd do today, I thought this is worth maybe a separate video to have a look at this book in a little bit more closer detail, even if it's just for the uh, nostalgia of looking back to sort of CB in 1982. So that's what we're gonna do now. We're gonna take some photos and we'll go through the book in a bit more detail. So of course CB radio in the very early 80s was absolutely everywhere, it was a new exciting technology, certainly for young sort of teenagers we could talk to our friends without using the telephone and the government pretty soon jumped on it and legislated it and uh, let us have FM but it was of course licensed, we did have to pay the home office a license for you and you got a radio operating number and that's illustrated here in this book and it's rather frightening cartoon where this guy is getting caught by Busby 
and detected. And don't forget the 934 megahertz CB range, which we never really used, did we? I mean, I never ever saw a radio on a 934 megahertz, and I believe they were quite expensive. I think they were three times the cost of a CB radio. Radios were fairly new, they were a hot topic, and they were stolen a lot, hence this fixing kit that trashed so many bloody decent CB radios. But as you delve into the book, you know, it starts to get a bit more intuitive. You've got subjects on home base antennas. None of this, I don't think, was in my original book, or if it was, I skipped by it. And you've got quarter wave and five-eighth wave, and also it st starts to talk about beams. And I noticed that the book then kind of goes into more drawing you into the amateur radio scene, which I think was really good. Been further into the book, it then goes on to explain the difference between FM and AM modulation, which I think is quite interesting. Certainly something that I was interested in back in the day when I was uh, 15. It does also mention burners or linear amplifiers, which were the bane of CB radio in the early 80s with all the TVI interference they used to cause with those old sets. A subject on Morse, which again is leaning towards the amateur side and shortwave radio listening, which were the same would have interested me back in the day. But I think they're the most important and the, probably the best part of the book is the troubleshooting guides that it includes to help you fix problems with your radio and also basic things like the different types of uh, coax and also the antenna plugs. Even a section on homebrewed, which explains how you can make a cheap CB antenna. What 15 year old didn't want to do that? And then moving towards the back of the book, where we have a frequency chart, which also includes the 934 frequencies. Are those frequencies still valid? Are they still legal? If you know, leave it in the comments. So, to sum up, I think looking back in retrospect, perhaps the big dummy was in fact the younger version of myself because I rejected this book too quickly just because it had a strange title and stupid rabbit cartoons. Unless the UK 40 edition I had didn't have all this extra information in it because the version I've got here is absolutely packed with really good useful CB information, amateur radio and I especially like the homebrew and repair sections towards the end. Well there you go, that's it. Cheers, thanks for watching. I hope you like this little trip of nostalgia. Please subscribe for more. I've got some more videos on the way. But as for now, as always, take care and I'll catch you all on the next one.